have a BMW Beamer motorcycle R1200 RT uh, 2007 let's uh, let's check it out let's check it out and um, we're gonna do the rear tire I use my uh, little lift here uh, it fits quite well on the center uh, stand right there um, we're not gonna lift we could lift it but uh, we're not gonna do that so um, yeah make sure uh, when you work on it you have a nice and uh, leveled surface and um, yeah let's start so let's remove <coughs> let's remove the pieces and as you can see I am um, let's do that already did some uh, A little bit of work. Um, so for this one you'll need a Torx 45 to loosen it up and yes the uh, exhaust the muffler needs to come off but it's no big deal. Uh, preferably a long socket number 15, 50 millimeter. If you don't have a long one I'm gonna grab a short one and you can grab the yeah 50% of the nuts. Not ideal but it will work so When you take this one off regularly, difficult word for me because with my hay fever, my uh, thing is, is, is uh, fucked up. Uh, if you take this one off regularly, um, then it will be no problem. Uh, if it's been ages, you might want to hit it with some WD 40 and make sure it's uh, hot so uh, the nut will come off a lot easier when it's hot. So. We'll uh, take this one off as well, as you can see, the exhaust, the muffler already is slipping and sliding and he wants to come off. So let's just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and as you can see it's no problem at all. Move it from left to right, uh, up and down, while pulling it a little bit back. Uh, and there we go. Uh, we got it. Right. Let's put this one over here. And now we have uh, the wheel, as you can see. This tire needs to come off. We're starting to see the threads in the, the center. So, uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. Continental Road Attack and <laughs> GT uh, version. Very good stuff. Um, let's undo these bolts. And I'll show you the uh, correct uh, tightening torques. In just one second when we put the wheel back on so make sure they fit perfect oh. what's wrong with you Milwaukee is having some issues Yep. Seems like uh, Mr. Milwaukee is uh, having a bad day. Ugh, let's grab another one. I swear I just did under two <laughs> on, on uh, I spin it around, took off the battery and it's, it was fine. And now it's acting up again. Yep, something is wrong with my Milwaukee. Of course, there is some uh, trembling in the wheel. So, you could also 
block the wheel and undo them manually maybe i'll do that just to show you so put it in gear this is a uh, first gear so as you can see the wheel is blocked and uh, let's get a big wrench good trick uh, if you don't know how tight you should uh, be uh, doing these bolts i put this one on 65 newton meters and uh, with my torque wrench you can swap it around so uh, now it's in a uh, loosening up modus <coughs> so 65 and let's see ah brakes free at 65 so we'll uh, look it up later and the other one already checked it out yep. Hopla. didn't even click but it clicked off camera so already knew it was 65 so we'll uh, we'll check it out later but i think if i re if i recall it correctly correctly um it was around 65 yeah i think it's 65 for these bolts all right as you can see the wheel these bolts are uh, looped up with anti-seize a little bit always a pleasure to take this off just like this and everything was cleaned last time so no problems over there <coughs> edge nice 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 you want to check out everything you want to check out of course your uh, your uh, your brakes make sure you still have a little bit of uh, material left look these ones are 80 uh, percent new still so uh yep let's swap out the fire shall we make sure we're working on motorcycles no adapters pieces every anywhere that are capable of flying out and uh, as you can see this tire is uh yeah it's flat over here so every time you go into a corner you're gonna fall a little bit yeah a bit strange but uh yeah did this job around 10,000 kilometers a um, little bit less with these engines because they're pretty torquey all right let's continue Motor motorcycle rims i need some uh, adapter pieces this one will only go uh, spread out to 16 inches and grabbing it from the inside is a bit and no go <laughs> on these rims so uh make sure if you have a tire machine you could do it by hand of course I did it by hand in the beginning and you have kits online make sure you have a good lever when you're taking off old tires because uh, that's pretty uh, yeah, pretty hard to do man if you're putting on new tires and they're old by hand without a machine then I wish you the best of luck um, you'll need it yep you'll uh, be bleeding in no time <laughs> cursing <laughs> uh, best best to do it with the machine of course uh, invest if you have a motorcycle and you uh, you like to ride and race invest in one of these uh, yeah everything is getting more expensive and uh, this and that but if you look online for a good second what the fuck those trucks are really destroying the street um, if you're looking online for a second hand machine uh, I would figure around maybe yeah 350 for maybe 500 for uh, an extra machine but this this simple setup is perfect for almost any tire so except the super big ones uh, 20 22 inches this and that but those kind of customers uh, yeah are not my customers so uh, yep let's uh, open up the valve you'll need when you're working working on motorcycles you'll need something like this uh, to be able to uh, open it up in tight spots tight places um, as you can see um, yeah we could bend it a little bit this is an easy one actually you could just bend it and yeah put on uh, the big the big boy Hoppla. and undo it but uh, a lot of rims yeah really uh, impossible to do with this one
pay attention if you have a newer uh, motorcycle with um, with sensors and uh, stuff you might want to check out where the sensor lives and uh, make sure you don't uh, you don't destroy it when you're pushing off the tire can push off the tire with our hands so if you don't have a if you're doing this by hand be uh, very patient massage it don't be too greedy don't push it off go almost millimeter per millimeter to push it off uh, you'll be good to go so we have an opening over here oh. off got that fly so make sure your lip is not uh, making contact with the rim of course and now we grab the little lip and if we would have a sensor on this tire we would uh, want to make sure that the sensor is uh, over here so we can lift the tire over the sensor and we don't rip the sensor when we uh, take off the tire. So a good practice is to uh, start at the valve. Most of the times the sensor is there. Actually on the valve. So we grab the tire over here. We push it into the bed, the deepest part of the rim. So we have more, uh, we have more access, more tire over here to uh, Take it off, and uh, then we go up. Want to make sure we're not making contact with the rim again. Uh, that was my machine just making this thing sound. So, and it popped off. Sometimes it will be stuck on uh, on the rim, and you want to go round and round, and just be gentle with your tire iron. Make sure you don't slip and hit your eye. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I always, uh, yeah, destroys my eye. <laughs> the, the the iron flew uh, flew uh, off the tire and then the little piece here and uh, poof popped just under my eye. So I was nearly blind. Yep, life can be a bitch. So. 
this tire comes off quite easy this is a continental look there's a lot of rubber it's not old yeah this might look too easy if you're dealing with old tires as i said uh, yeah. pay attention uh, they will uh, be tricky look how easy and you can feel for it and yeah it's really really soft this is sturdy and this centerpiece is soft because the rubber is gone so I couldn't do it twice if I tried but whatever let's grab a new one and um, I saw that uh, it was uh, difficult in uh, the summer period to get a summer tire so I didn't have a lot of options um, all the other tires were um, yeah 15 days for delivery so uh, as you can see this one comes from uh, from Spain I think uh, yeah España Español Hola Supermercado Telebancos por aquí Let me get Spanish Yep So I couldn't uh, choose my normal go to tire being the Contempo Rootstack GT I did it. I thought I ordered Michelin. Damn it. So, it is my go to tire. Continental Conti Road Attack 4 GT. Make sure you have GT Gran Turismo for uh, these motorcycles, as uh, this tire is made a little bit sturdier for the heavier motorcycles. Um, the other one was a normal Road Attack. And I always have uh, these ones flying around. Uh, and I put it on there uh, because the customer had a, a blue tire. So uh, yeah, and you have uh, something on stock that fits. You put it on, of course, and uh, nothing wrong with the normal root attacks. But uh, as you can see, when you have the heavy torque of this engine, and they're quite torquey, uh, yeah, you might wanna put on a GT tire. They will last a little bit longer. So. <coughs> we uh, take off the valve and how we do we do that just grab your knife make a little incision and there you go make sure you have an extra valve of course there we go Keep recycling to save the planet And let's put on a short valve, a new one, fresh one. The other one was still good, but yeah, it costs uh, nothing on this figure. Uh, sure, this is the correct way of running a shop. Make sure this is clean, of course. If it isn't, if it isn't, grab your, uh, yeah, your brass brush and Give it a good, a good clean, a good rub. Voila. Ah, oh, this will be perfect. Voila. Yeah, you could actually have some uh, some air loss if this is uh, not clean. So this one really handy. You should get it when you're working on motorcycles. Um, you can just stick in the valve like this and just pull it with your two with your thumbs Hoppla. and there we go so this is an easy rim but most of the rims are, are not not so uh, easy voila and we even have uh, something to repair the threads uh, yeah it's also a thread repair thing um, yeah it's a pretty handy uh, Handy stuff. This is for the insides where uh, the little uh, the little valves go, as you can see, to repair uh, the threads. Yeah, easy cheesy. Good stuff. Get it for uh, or well, maybe bought it for, for three or four bucks. 
back in the day we already have it for like 12 13 years something like that uh let's clean up the rim and uh, how do we do that well just uh yeah maybe uh this one and like magnesium rims we uh aluminium rims if there's not a lot of dirt grab your brush give it a good brush with your brass brass brush say brush a the times in a row brush 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 yeah, whatever um um where is my where is my brass brush damn it oh we're gonna do the the maintenance the maintenance as well the oil change and filter yep Ah, uh, goes a lot faster. <laughs> so that's one side. Feel for it. Ah, oh. uh, this is clean. Just, just a little bit more. Voila. Now we change directions. Yeah, a little bit dirtier. Voila. You should always feel for high spots. Alright, feels okay. Now we just relieve the pressure a little bit so we can clean up the other parts. There we go. Come in. can see you don't clean too much because even when this this is a brass brush kind of uh, as you can see we're taking off some material of the rim not a lot just some now it's perfectly clean yep so the air will have a better chance to stay in there. Uh, I'm gonna leave on the weights to see if the rim, um, th th these are expensive tires, so they are pretty much balanced out. Um, I'm gonna leave on the weights to see if it uh, balances out or not. If not, we'll take them off and uh, restart it. The balancing process. So, uh, you hear people talk about. Uh, Aligning alignments and stuff and blah blah blah. This has nothing to do with alignment. Uh, alignment is something you do with, uh, yeah, when you tighten up the chain. Or uh, and this one doesn't have a chain. It's a shaft, so there is no alignment issue uh, on the smoother side. But a lot of people talk about alignment when you're actually talking about balancing your tires. If you have a, a trembling in your uh, steering, um, your, um, your steering wheel or, or your, uh, your steer, then you have a problem with, probably have a problem with a, a wrongly balanced tire, unbalanced tire, or worn down uh, shocks or something. There's also a possibility, but then you'll see if your shocks are worn, you will have a very, uh, high um how it's how is it called uh li like a fish the shims no uh, whatever you know what i'm talking about so uh direction the direction is uh often on the rim uh you can see the arrow over here so it needs to spin like that when we put on the tire it needs to spin like that other way around uh, easy to see, of course, on this tire, <coughs> motorcycle tires, there's always a V-shaped thing. So the V, the point, should point in uh, the direction of rolling. Except for the front wheel, there we need uh, it's the other way around, because we only have one wheel. And when we need, uh, when we need to brake, the V needs to uh, be uh, like this, so we can grab better into the roads. Uh, like this, I mean. 
So uh, this is this is for the rear. This is for the front. But yeah, this is for the front. So when you brake, um, it grabs. You turn it like this, and the V should be like this. <laughs> the opposite of a normal tire. So uh, when you brake, it grabs a lot better into the the road turnback. As you can see, this one doesn't have a clear V pattern, but you can still see, uh, it like, yeah, you can still make a V out of it, more or less. So uh, when you brake, you will uh, have grab onto the V. This might roll better, but when you brake, the this this pattern will not grab as good into the roads. Uh, and that's why you need uh, when, you, when you only have one tire, you need to turn it around. Follow. So, this is the good direction for this rear tire. Let's pop it on. <coughs> Always stick on your. Um, and we might want to check out where the valve lifts. Although there isn't a sensor on this one. Uh, you also have markings on your tire. Sometimes, not always. Uh, to see where is the lightest spot on your tire and the heaviest spot. So, um, this one doesn't have markings. So what I do, <coughs> and a lot of times this works out fine, uh, I try <coughs> to look for the, <coughs> the dot uh, number, look, made in Germany. Deutsche Technik, soft, all right, good. Um, so I look for the, um, yeah, it's right over here, the little uh, round thing with E4 in. And I put that one where the valve is. And I don't know why, but a lot of times it's, uh, it's spot on. Here you can see, here's the joint, you could put the joint, um, as this could be a little bit heavier maybe. Uh, over on the uh, valve, uh, but this, this one doesn't say anything specific, so pop it on, balance it out, you'll be good to go. If you have markings, put the red, the red dot, you have a red dot and a yellow dot, the red dot uh, is the lightest, um, the heaviest spot, I think. You put it uh, where the valve lives, of course. Yep. And um, yeah, nicely massage it in. Make sure your tire sits in the center of the bed. So this part over here should live in the deepest part of the rim. So you have the best chance of putting on your tire and not damaging it. If you're having doubts, lube up the inside of the tire a little bit more. You should lube up, Michelin actually says, you should lube it up like this, like this, and on the inside. So that's a correct, correctly lubed up tire. And if you have grease that's a little bit dry, hit it with some water. Soup, some soupy water is even better. Voila. Voila. It's very hot, so <laughs> the water is uh, evaporating quite quickly. Yep. Go a little bit, a little piece. Ah, oh, my time. And as you can see now, the tire almost pops on by itself. All right, now, by this time you wanna check out your direction again, um, as you can still take it off if you need to. Okay, arrow is good. Nice. <coughs> Now let's make sure we start at the valve again. Voila. Um, and let's make sure we have the uh, the round thing here on the valve side. All right. So we want our tires to pop on uh, at the valve part. So we start pushing down over here. Actually, over here. That would be perfect. Build up the tension a little bit, push the tire in the rim, voila, not too much because 
else you'll have problems uh, inflating it. As you can see, things are getting really tight, even my machine has problems. So, you want to push it down until it's uh, yep, in the center. And at this point, of course, in case of doubt, lubricate. Those who have ladies uh, will know what I'm talking about. So, sorry, children. Look at that. Want to check out that you're not damaging the tire? Uh, where you're doing this by doing this by hand with uh, things like this. Yeah, make sure you uh, stick it under and go like this. Look, that's the. The smallest parts, those, one are, those ones are good. Um, don't uh, exaggerate and do it over here because, uh, yeah, you might have accidents. So, uh, give me my spoon. That's how you do it by hand. And even with the machine, it's pretty, uh, pretty risky. Um, Again, piece of doubt, lubricate. You don't want to rip the edge, of course. Um, if it seems like you're ripping the edge, lower the machine just a little bit. Uh, voila. Make sure you're not making contact with the rim. Barely not making contact. Voila. You just went a little bit further. And this part is acting up, as you can see. So uh, I'm gonna quit and stick in a spoon over here. And this is a yeah, fantastic one. Actually, a really, really good one. If you can get it under, because things are getting really tight. If you can get under there without damaging the rim, and I might might want to use the uh, normal one. So you back off a little bit and make sure we practice what we preach. Don't go too far, as you can see. This is good, good stuff. Voila. It happens that I need to uh, do the last part by hand. almost there as you can see so now it's uh, uh, time uh, voila. can you see it can you see it happening bam <laughs> yeah don't be, easy, be so easy when you do it by hand but. all right take off Take it off the machine and let's uh, make sure we can inflate it, massage it so the edges spread out. You could just bounce it on uh, the floor, but I like to hit it. I like to treat my tires like my own. Um, no, that's not true. Really I didn't say that. I'm just joking. All right, let's put it over here. Ah, inflated. <sighs> I was joking. I didn't uh, think I'm serious. <laughs> of course I'm joking. I love women. I love women, of course. All right. Get it on there. Um, 2.9 bars. And PSI, I don't know what it is. Probably around... Uh, 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 27. Ah, cover your ears as uh, this will pop pretty loud. Yeah, typically it popped on so hard that it fell. It was uh, over here that it fell on uh, the thing, so luckily we didn't have damage on uh, the rim. Yep.
looks pretty nice pretty nice 2.9 so I'm gonna put in three bars as you can see that's uh, almost nothing at all up oh, and um, by the time you take off this one you can hear it it will be 2.95 and it will settle and uh, be 2.9 and uh, also the air will escape little by little so uh, yeah always put a 0.1 extra in the tire so your customer will be happy if you're doing it for customers so this um, this wheel actually uh, is capable of uh, being balanced on this uh, balancer most of the times you need a static balance uh, machine machine balance tool and um, where is it it lives somewhere oh look this one so you can uh, put the wheel on this uh, shaft uh, th those two cones will uh, tighten it up and um, then you can balance it out statically when you level the tool of course but this one is uh, yeah good enough it fits on the machine so let's put it on uh, a cone in there on the, the connect side and another one just because uh, I didn't have enough uh, room to put on my tool here so make sure it's tight spin it as you can see this one is spinning nicely there's the slides no no it's just uh, the dust from the aluminum that's messing with my eyes yeah perfect perfect there might be a little a little thing in the you know, little uh, indentation I don't know let's check it out so 17 inches on the rim and this is a 5.7 5.7 yep and the distance to the rim is oh what's that what damn it yep 17 inches and 5.7 that's okay yep let's uh let's go for a spin yeah spins nice spins nice the rim is uh, okay 15 grams to add extra so uh the machine is now um holding account for a rim with a uh, yeah where you put on the weights over here we were gonna put them over here but yeah it's uh more or less the same so 15 grams that's right over here we are gonna check it out and there's ah there used to be a, a weight on there and it, it fell off so i'm gonna clean this is five grams by the way so i'm gonna clean it take this one off and put on 20 grams so yep this is 20 grams as you can see and uh let's take it off so little screwdriver to lift it a little bit Hoppa. Uh, and then we'll need some brake cleaner but the the bottom part of the weights might not come off it might it might not if it doesn't come off we'll need something that's uh, a bit stronger then brake cleaner we will need a brush <laughs> yeah it's uh, kind of okay you can use a rubber wheel of course um, that's good for uh, gluey gluey stuff when you're working on cars um, and you have parts of the rim where you cannot see it um, if you would use a brush and make some scratches use the brush of course hey. I'm gonna be here for a uh, whole day that's what I would do with a car so you take your brush and just ever so lightly you would um, you would clean up the rim 
I'm just doing it on the uh, on the, the the glue part. So you you break the glue off a little bit. You go back to your brake cleaner. That will make the glue come off as well. And now a little bit better because we damaged the glue, as you can see. The glue becomes, uh, yeah, gooey, gooey, gooey. So this room will be good to go with this technique. And with some elbow grease, of course. That's how things happen in life. With elbow grease. Well, there we go. Pretty clean. And for the ones who want to be uh, super safe, uh, we could use the rubber wheel if I can uh, find it somewhere. Lives somewhere around here. Voilà, there we go. So uh, you put this one on your uh, your drill, and uh, just like that, you can uh, take off the glue with uh, this little wheel. Uh, but they're quite expensive these days, and um, now this is from 3M. Pretty expensive, but uh, yeah, you can do it with my technique as well, and make no damage to the rim. Voilà. Let's put on 20 grams because we took off five and let's see what we have here of course make sure it's on your uh, arrow your marking push it down so the glue will stick and let's check it out Yeah, that's pretty normal on these rooms. Uh, so, 10, an extra 10 on the same spot. Uh, it calculates for the weights being over here, so that's normal. I expected this, but uh, I didn't want to uh, be uh, witty <laughs> and put on 30 grams when the machine says 15. But uh, of course, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, the weights in the center will not do as much as a uh, or close to the center will not do as much as the weight on the sides to uh, create a force alrighty so luckily we clean up enough area to put on the extra 10 I'm gonna do it with the 10 on there uh, without putting on the 5 sometimes most of the time you will get another reading or even a zero but i think it's going to be 10 and it's yeah yeah the machine was faster but i was expecting this as well so where is the 10 over here so that's uh right over here on the right side and what do we have there uh 15 grams so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna install 10 grams. And next time, because we're gonna create too much uh, of a weight thing on the rim, next time we'll take off all the weights and, uh, yep, do it fresh. All right, with a versionized rim, if that's the thing. So we're gonna put it uh, next to this one. Yep. Yep. And when you have the static, I, I think I have a video about it with a static balancing motorcycle tire. Um, when you have the static thing, you would just spin your wheel, and uh, it will. Uh, of course, this bearing has a little bit of resistance. If it would be uh, really badly unbalanced, it would uh, immediately turn to uh, the heaviest point. And whatever the heaviest point is, it will be at the bottom, of course. So it would be like this, and then you would 
um, make a marking right over here. Turn your uh, rim and uh, put the weight on there. Hold on. Easy cheesy. Voila. Should be nice and clean, not greasy, else the uh, weights will fly off and your customer or you will be unhappy as your motorcycle will not ramble because this is the rear wheel but an unbalanced rear tire is not good for your uh, your bearing is not good for the the chassis uh yeah everything will be trembling and the chassis will uh um catch those trembling uh those trembles from the wheel as you, as you will and uh um yeah, the force of the, of the trembling will go through the uh, entire motorcycle, creating stress in the, in the chassis and uh, uh, possible tires and brakes. And uh, yeah, pretty important to uh, balance your tires. Pretty important to watch my videos, of course. <coughs> At this time, yeah, by the time this video comes out, it will be uh, probably a year <laughs> a year later as i have a lot of things to do but the time uh, at this time so uh right now i want to say i have 905 subscribers so uh, still not making a buck but we're getting there 6500 almost watch hours and you need 4000 so that's no problem. Uh -huh. Another 10 grams on the same spot, I suppose. Yeah, nearly on the same spot. So a little bit more over here. Let's put on an extra 10. So it says over here, that's uh, right between those uh, yeah, fake spokes, if you have a and it will be difficult to put it over here hmm. you could you could stick them over here as well of course just watch your uh no oh, there was some there was one on there over here as you can see but it fell off or was taken off could be could be the case as well don't spray the can on your face Ethan. <laughs> yeah, again, the gluey, sticky thing. So let me take it off. There we go. Voila. Exciting. Still, ten grams on the other sides. Yeah, we could be playing this game for the whole, <sighs> whole day long, but 10 grams on this side, uh, I'm gonna put it right over, um, yeah, over here, yep, all right, so that will be our final 10 grams, if it shows 5 on the other side, I'm gonna call it a day, because 5 grams you will not notice, not even, no. 10 grams you might notice it, uh, when it would be a front wheel, after uh, higher than uh, maybe 160, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe, you might notice it's on the front wheel above 200 kilometers per hour. All right. Yeah, motorcycle wheels always. Uh, ah. Five five, perfect. Zero zero would be perfect, but this is uh, th these machines have a five gram um, give or take on them, so uh, it's uh, it's okay, it's okay. Especially for a rear rim, I don't think uh, other shops would be putting in this amount of work for a rear wheel. <coughs> And there we go. 
nicely balanced. Let's make sure that um, this one over here is uh, nice and clean. Make sure you uh, don't exaggerate as this is another real brass brush. It's only a fake one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and make sure this edge is nice and clean. For these rims you need a, a copper, a real copper brush. <laughs> There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Will you look at that? Nice. And of course, a quick little rub on the inside over here. And you can feel for high spots, of course. This should be very flat as well. Important stuff, very important. You don't want to be balancing out your tire, your wheel, and then uh, install it on a look over here, install it on high spots over here or over here. So uh, you install it correctly. Feel for it. Of course, the edges where uh, nothing was, uh, um, yeah, over here the, there will be some paint, that's normal, uh, but these areas, this area here should be uh, perfect, flat. All right, let's put it on. Yep. <sighs> And I'll look up the uh, tiny torque specs in just one second. Of course, over your side, make sure your uh, edge here is clean as well. And there we go. someone to hold the wheel because it's not so easy especially when you're trying to film it so let's uh, grab our torx tool and damn it let's uh, <laughs> yep there we go Put in the bolts, a little bit to the left and the lights, right. Oh, okay, wait, wait one second. Uh, we should more or less be, yep, there we go. Just spin the wheel a little bit and uh, put a little pressure on one bolt and you'll find something. You'll find the hole and you tighten one down by hand and that way the wheel stays on there and you can put in the other ones. Alright, let's do that. So, your uh, impact gun on the lowest setting, just spin them down and let's see how much torque they need. It is 60 newton meters. Uh, I'm going to use 65 as there's some anti seats on the bolts and I'm using this extension. You always do some, uh, some torque when you, uh, using an extension. So again, the bike is in gear, cross pattern, 
number four. Um, last but not least, number five. Voila, and now we're gonna check them all. Just go around. Count them as well. It was number three, number four, and number five. Voila. That's how you torque them down. Now let's slide the muffler on there. You could clean it up and use some um, <coughs> some uh, exhaust paste if you have problems. This one doesn't, so I'm gonna just pop it on again. And you want to do the same thing, wiggle, 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 and push forward. Yep, yep, yep. And you want to line this hole up, of course, with the corresponding other hole. Um, Look, it goes in pretty nice. And we died, of course. Uh, so you want to line up the hole. And nice. There it goes in. Cool, cool, cool. So let's torque this one down. And that will be number one setting on my Milwaukee. That will do. It's about 30, perhaps. Something like that. And then, of course, the... Oh, damn it. The little uh, thing here. So this one goes on like that. Then you have a spacer. And then you have the nut, the cheesy, make sure you're tightening it correctly, so somewhere over here will be fine, the way it's set, and you want to make sure that the little shape stays in place. Um, and that will be good for a number two setting on the Milwaukee. Just we'll start by number one with number one. Yep. Typically, uh, sometimes it fails. I have to uh, fix it, reset. When we bottom out the number one setting, it will be around 60 Nm. meters. And of course, we could use our torque uh, wrench. And make sure it's, uh, yeah, just feel for it, feel for it. You'll feel it. That will be around good. Uh, <laughs> around, around 20, 25 perhaps. Uh, yeah, you'll need to check it out. Uh, let the engine um, fire up and make sure it's out of gear, of course. Yep. Make sure your key is in the ignition. And listen for exhaust leaks. You can also feel for them. <coughs> Yeah, let's open the gates. The gates are open. <sighs> there we go. It's a neutral, pretty important. Always hold your clutch. Let's just make a little bit of noise. 
Nice. Yeah. So, uh, something uh, to note. Um, hold your hands over here. You'll feel the leaks immediately. There are none. So, uh, pretty good stuff. A little bit of uh, black unburned fuel. So, I think uh, I need spark plugs. All right. Perfect. Good. Thanks for watching. Hope you can uh, swap your uh, tire by now and uh, it won't be a problem if you uh, be patient and um, follow my instructions, more or less. Good. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye bye.